And for what it's worth, why don't we play this sound, actually? Because this is uh, Gianforte. I think this is after, this is part of his victory speech. And he also wants to offer a sincere apology for assaulting this guy. And what's interesting is not really the kind of pablum that he says, but how little the audience cares. Like, it, and Matt made this point that for future reference, it would be more interesting to have the camera on the audience than on the candidate, because presumably there will be a lot more apologies as more Republicans, you know, physically assault people. I think it's going to be in another couple of years. It's going to be like, well, I respect well, no. my opponent, but he never punched a reporter. So I don't know how well, you think can about it. If you, if you think about it again, this stuff all escalates It all some, something that was not culturally acceptable becomes culturally acceptable. And then you take it to the next step and somebody a little more unhinged goes that next step, you know, and, and well, that's it's inevitable. I, I mean, Let's let's play the audio, but yeah. I think yeah. I I think the the point is is that you're always going to get lunatics, and you're always going to have people who you know I mean you had uh, you know that guy Kyle Paladino from uh, from New York uh, running against you know running for governor at one point he never body slammed somebody, but there's there's a limit generally, or there has been in a past where the voters actually punish people for something like this. And you could argue that it happened too late, but I'm quite convinced that there was really no way uh, the voters were going to hold this guy to account in Montana. Anyways, other well, Republicans. Well, let's, listen, I, listen to the Republican audience in terms of how they respond to to this, you know, generic apology he's trying to give. And obviously he's speaking to outside of the room, but the room's pretty revealing. Last night, I learned a lesson. And no, please, I need to share something from my heart here, and I just ask you to bear with me. And when you make a mistake, you have to own up to it. That's the Montana way. Amen. Last night I made a mistake. And I took an action that I can't take back, and I'm not proud of what happened. I should not have responded in the way that I did. And for that, I'm sorry. And you're forgiven. We love you. I should not have treated that reporter that way. And for that, I'm sorry, Mr. Ben Jacobs. I also want to apologize for the Fox News team that was there. Well, that's and important. <laughs> I'm sorry to each one of you. Please still have me on. That we had to go through this. <laughs> that's not the person that I am, and it's not the way I'll lead in this state. Rest assured, our work is just beginning, but it does begin with me taking responsibility for my own actions. You deserve a congressman who stays out of the limelight and just gets the job done. I promise to work hard to protect our precious way of life. Sorry I broke that Jew reporter's glasses, see? Now I'm going to go to Washington and take away your health care. But you know, what, what yeah. is amazing is how quickly they, I mean... They don't they, care. They, were they don't care. They no. don't care. In fact, and... and but and, and there may be an argument that it actually may have helped him in some I way. I think it did. Um, yeah. But again, uh, like as long as you can turn it into that, and you sort of said it yourself, uh, Mike, Michael, when you're joking there, but as long as you turn it into that, that liberal Jew reporter and you can make it about who it was and not what you did, which is what these guys do all the time, then it's okay. Because let's, that, that's 30 or plus years of propaganda. They've so vilified reporters and anybody on the left you know, and that it's at a point where if he really if he'd done that to a good white upstanding rural folk from Montana while the guy was out hunting, you know, that might be a crime he should go to jail for. But it's OK because of who he did it to. And that that's what it comes down to. That's what they've done to our country. And let's not forget, that's exactly what the press release that they put out in response to uh, Ben Jacobs reporting that he had just been body slammed before there was audio. That that is right. exactly the tactic they took. And so, I mean, 
if you want, if the guy was genuinely sincere, he would have been, I apologize, uh, not just for the action that I took, but for assaulting this guy. I will, um, you know, go down and deal with the police department. I also apologize for the press release we put out afterwards. I mean, you know, right, right, right. right. But that's the thing. Like he knows the game. They all are trained in this stuff. They know how this works, which is essentially, he comes out afterwards, blames the guy, blames him for who he is, and, and makes it about left versus right, non-American, quote, unquote, you know, versus American, that kind of thing. And then Rush Limbaugh runs with it the next day. You know, Tucker Carlson sits on his dumbass show in Fox and repeats the same thing. And, you know, by the, time, by the time it's all over, it's actually the reporter's fault, and it doesn't really matter what the truth is. They get that. You know what I mean? And that's what we've had to deal with for a long time. And we've kind of ignored that elephant in the room that we've allowed that to proliferate and not done anything about it. There, there is also the, the other story that, the, you know, that Huffington Post has broke, which is that apparently the local NBC affiliate refused to air audio of the assault. So, uh, and, that's, and that's, yeah, it's a Sinclair Jay, broadcasting well, group, not, which we were just talking about. This yeah. 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 I mean, this is. Again, and 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 I, I know uh, uh, Cliff that you know the Sinclair Media Group uh, quite well. I was well. a political analyst for Sinclair during the 2004 election. I was the liberal designated to argue with whoever the host was, right. and Armstrong Williams, another name uh, we've all I become reaccustomed to this election cycle. And that was what I, you know, I, I, I did that regularly. And so I saw the inner workings of that whole beast, and the fact that they're being, I mean, again. I don't know what Democrats can do at this point. I don't know what the left can do at this point because the Republicans control the FCC. They control, you know, the, the majority government. But we allowed this to happen. A group like Sinclair, you know, they're the ones that, that put on that ridiculous documentary about John Kerry in 2004. They're the ones that refuse to report on anything but positive stories from Iraq. We've let these guys go across the country. We've, we've loosened ownership rules around media so that they can take over. And we're about to do it. They're about to well, take the FCC, over the, on, the Tribune group. Yes. Well, that, that is the thing is that, uh, and, and Dan and I talked about this yesterday. There's there apparently, and I've tried to find it. I can't find any more information, but apparently there's a suit because of, of the way in which the uh, rules were relaxed, but it essentially allows Sinclair media. And when we talked yesterday about that, there are bad actors. I mean, the idea that they wouldn't run this is, I mean, just people should just take a step back right. and just contemplate the idea of local news not running with audio of a uh, an assault by a guy who is about to be their congressman. I mean, that is, nope. I mean, right. you know, it's, it's just, well, and now, it's now, nothing. Sam, picture it all in concert together. So you live in, in Bozeman or, you know, whichever part of, of Montana, right? You, you know, wherever they say, I don't remember where that local news station is. They won't show it, but they'll probably give, they've got a right-wing commentator who comes out of their headquarters in Baltimore who's allowed to go on the end of local news for a couple minutes and give his opinion. So that guy gives you his opinion. They won't list, let you listen to the audio. Then on Fox News that night, they either don't cover it when you're watching that because we're talking about the same voter here. They either won't cover it or they'll cover it from a right-wing slant. And then you turn on Rush Limbaugh the next day or you go read Breitbart. You get the same thing. You can live in that universe. These people comfortably do. And again, we've allowed it to happen. And so from their local news, from their national news, from what they read, they've all, they've gotten the same story, which is this guy did nothing wrong. If in anything, he was a victim. Hey, Sam Cedar here. Uh, folks, you probably heard about the whole uh, YouTube uh, advertiser apocalypse. Well, we're suffering from it, too. We need your help. If you want to keep this show alive, you want us uh, to be able to still put out uh, clips on a regular basis, head over to our Patreon page. Here's the link right here or down below there. And uh, just give us a couple bucks a month uh, and support this program. Really appreciate it.